let's make God's name great. We're going to run tell somebody that he is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my victory. He is my provider. to God and welcome to the overflowing life. Well, today, the revivalist herself is about to come, Dr. Jennifer Johnson. You know, one of the things that's going to happen during this revival is that we're going to make God's name great. You know, all across America, you know the, the campaign ad of the last presidential election, make America great again. But it's time to make God's name great again. Dr. J is going to wade into this message, and I'm telling you, baby, you better get ready because we are about to make God's name great again. So get your Bible, pen, and paper. Let's go to the Metro Church. Let's join Dr. Jennifer Johnson, and we're going to learn how to make his name great again. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. I can rest, I can go to sleep. I don't have to be worrying and looking around and wondering what's going to happen. I can sleep because he gives me his beloved sweet sleep. We sleep like a baby because God is our protector. Not only that, God is our peace. He's Jehovah Shalom. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding keeps our heart. When you should be falling apart, pulling your hair out, amen, twisting your weed, God gives you peace. In the midst of everything that's going on right now, we don't even understand what's about to happen, but we have peace. Peace become like a garrison, like an umpire unto us that protect us from wearing and being concerned. We're not sitting around thinking about our problems, talking about our problems, and taking on our problems because we know God is Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. And I declare peace to be still and nothing or nobody is going to disturb my peace. It doesn't matter what happens in this life and what happens around me. The peace of God. I got his peace. I'm holding on to his peace. Peace be still. So when we start thinking and thanking God, we won't be messed up about things that we do wrong and mistakes. We get out of our emotions and we stay in the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We stay in faith because we know something. The world don't know what we know. We know that God is going to be with us in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trial and circumstance, things that you don't even understand right now. You're wondering why it happened to you. Bad things happen to good people because we have an adversary, the devil, who goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And when he rolls up on you, his intention is to steal, to kill, and destroy. But when he comes, when he makes his run at you and your family, you have peace. I know, as Job said, I know that my Lord liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. When the enemy came after Job's family and he came after uh, Job's fortunes and his finances and he came and Job had failed health and when he came, when his friends even talked about him, Job said, I know something though. I know God is somewhere in the midst of this and it's going to turn out for my good. I don't understand why all that happened because the Bible said Job was an upright man. He was a blameless man. He served God. He worshiped God. He worshiped God with his offerings. He worshiped God in his altar. And he praised God. He magnified God. He told people about God. But yet, the enemy came against him. One trial after another trial. One wave after another wave after another wave. But God, everybody said, but God. And when we come through things and we come in this church, regardless of what we're going through, mistakes that happen, things, mishaps that happen in our lives, we just still praise God anyhow. Because it don't take away his glory. The praise that's due to him, I'm going to come up here and praise him anyway. I may not feel like praising him, but I'm going to praise God. Why? Because glory is due to him. 
Praise is due to him. And sometimes you're just going to have to sacrifice a praise. Bring, the Bible said bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Sometimes you're just going to have to go on and lift your hand anyway. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it because God is worthy of my praise. My feet hurt, but I'm going to stand a little bit longer because I'm going to walk these, take these same feet to work tomorrow. But I'm going to stand, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to make his name great in the sanctuary. I'm not going to make the devil's name great. See, we make the devil's name great when we talk about all of our ailments and all of our, our, our problems and all the things we're going through. We keep saying the devil this and the devil that, but now we're going to make God's name great. We're going to make his name great. We're going to start telling everybody how good God is instead of telling the, uh, everybody how bad the devil is. See, he likes that. That's where he get his, his props from when we publicize how bad he is. He wants to be bad. And when we tell everybody how bad he is, how evil he is, he loves it. And that's why we're going to have to start talking about God instead of the devil. He's not only our provider, our protector, he's our peace, but he's our perfecter. He perfects everything. He makes us whole. He's our healer, Jehovah. Rafa, he's my healer. His wounds became my healing. I, I have faith, I have vision, I see myself whole. It doesn't matter what the report of the, uh, uh, of the enemy is, the report of the doctor, I don't know, but I, the report that I'm going to believe is the report of the Lord, and the report of the Lord is I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I'm not backing down off of that testimony. I said I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. God said that I was healed. He said by his stripes I was, by his stripes I am healed. He told me not to forget his benefits. He healed all my diseases. Forgive my iniquities. Redeem my life from destruction. Don't you know that the devil has been trying to destroy you? Destroy your faith, shatter your confidence. When you make a mistake, the devil is trying to shatter your confidence. But you make up your mind. No, 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 no. As I always say, today what? Ain't your day. And tomorrow ain't looking good either. See, we've done so, so many things, I mean, even against ourselves because we put ourselves down, but it's time to start putting God up and lifting him up and think about how good he's been. So we must praise God for his glory. Praise. God inhabits the praise of his people. That's why we praise God so hard. Why do you think that when Mike and them come in here and, 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 and uh, they start praising God, sometimes, it's, it's, I mean, they get loud. I know sometimes we don't like loud music. But they get, sometimes they start just praising God. Sometimes, I don't know for those that are in, know about spiritual things, sometimes we're breaking through some stuff. Because sometimes you come in here with a heaviness. You bring that in, to, you don't mean to, but you bring in the cares of this world with you. And, and sometimes the praise team or, or the choir or myself, when I get up here, amen, and you wonder what I'm doing. And I'm wondering with you. Oh, Lord. And we're breaking through some stuff. We're breaking up fallow ground. We're breaking down some things, tearing down some things, pulling out, running up some stuff in the spirit realm. Because folk are hurting out there in the pews. People are, are dealing with all kind of mind battles, going through so many different trials and struggles, and, and, and they're trying their best to get their mind relieved from all of this stuff. And when we get into that praise, it breaks some barriers. It tears down some walls. It causes us to go from being lame to leaping. And sometimes you just need to break crazy on the devil. Forget how cute you are. Just let the devil know on today, I'm about to get ugly. I'm going to be like David when the Ark of the Covenant came in and, 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 he, and he started dancing before the Lord and he, he danced off his, his clothes, but his wife got upset. See, that's what happens when sometimes when you bring a friend with you or your boss or co-worker and, and Pastor Jennifer starts showing out and getting loud. You're like, oh. Because you told them already how orderly the service is and how the word come forth, and then we start speaking in them tongues. <laughs> David's wife, Micah, who was the daughter of Saul, said, I cannot believe this. 
You're the king. And you're up here dancing with these handmaids with the common people. you acting just like them. But you're supposed to be the first lady. You're supposed to be the pastor, the bishop, the apostle of faith. And you out there doing the bump and the twist and the... I know I'm not relevant, <laughs> but... And he looked at her and he said, let me tell you something. Hold up. Hold up. He said, I can be more reckless than this. He said, now let me tell you something. It wasn't you that did this for me. You didn't save me in battle. When I'm a man of war and when I've gone out to battle, God is the one that spared my life. God is the one that has restored my joy. God is the one that restored my health. God is the one that has blessed me and anointed me and appointed me and approved of me to be king. So you ain't seen nothing yet. You're just like your daddy. Saul was a daddy. And he was rebellious against God. That God had to pull him down from his, his place of appointment, amen, as being king because he was rebellious and she was being rebellious like her daddy. But David said, don't despise my praise. And that's why every now and then you might have to just kind of move away from somebody in the pew. It may not just be their moment. You know, they might break crazy next Sunday. You know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Every now and then, because every Sunday I come in, I, I try to tell myself, you're going to be proper, because I know how to be proper. I do know how to be proper. I was taught. I was trained. But then when I think and think, it, I turn into a different person. And I want to just praise God. Amen. I want to just worship him. So when someone, uh, when you get ready to praise God and the other person don't want to praise God with you, just, it's okay though. It's okay. Let them do this. Let them be them. See, I told y'all I can be hood rat too. <laughs> and so you just let them do what they do, but you can praise God. And don't be worried about what nobody else thinks. So David said, I can be more undignified, more reckless than this. You, in other words, he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to dance in front of these handmaids. And after that, you know, she didn't, can't even bear any more children. Let me tell you something. We become barren in our lives and what God has called us to do. We're not profitable in our lives we, well, because we despise when other people praise God. Or we decide, despise praising God. Because of our upbringing, because of this and because of that. And don't you know who I am? No, we're trying to make God's name great. I don't know about your name, because that, that, that passes. Your beauty passes. The Bible said in, in Proverbs 31, charm is deceptive and beauty is vain, but a woman that reverence and praise the Lord, that woman shall be praised. Move it on. But I'm going to make God's name great. Anybody want to go with me this morning? Anybody else in here got a revelation that God's name is to be great? But you are holy, oh, you are enthroned in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. Now great is the Lord, the psalmist said. How deserving a praise in the city of our God. Let them praise your great and awesome name. For your name is holy. In other words, let them confess. And when we tell other folk about the goodness of God and how awesome, how loving, how kind, how generous, how, how merciful God is, we're making his name great. When we praise him and, and talk about his attributes, who he is, and when we sing those songs, don't y'all know we're talking to people about how good God is? And when we sing those songs, amen, we talk about the acts of God and what he's done. Oh, my soul, bless God. Get your copy of today's life-changing message. One miracle after another miracle. One deliverance after another deliverance. One healing after another healing. Because my people who have been called by my name have chose to make my name great. Learn to live the life God designed for you when you order today's message by writing to us. Visit our website or call 1-800-465-6830.
We worship God, give admiration to God and, and adoration to God. We make his name great. How do we make his name great? Not only telling other people and testifying about his goodness, but we make his name great by bringing our talents and our gifts unto the Lord. That's how we make his name great. We bring our gifts and our talents to God's house and we worship him. And I have this little story about the house of many lamps. It's about church attendance. See, one thing about coming to God's house, we have to be obedient to God. He said, forget, uh, forsake not to assemble yourselves. And we, we come to God's house. See, we don't want to forsake God's house and, and forget his covenant because we'll forfeit his blessings. But this little story about the house of lamps, and there's a little legend of a vision, a village in southern Europe that boasts of a church called the House of Many Lamps. And when it was built in the 16th century, the architect provided for no light except for the receptacle at every seat for the placing of a lamp. And each Sunday night as the people gathered, they would bring their lanterns and slip them into the brackets of their seat. But when someone stayed away, his place would be dark. See, when you stay away, your place become dark. The place where you're supposed to be, you could be there and you could be that blessing in the house of the Lord. You can be that light. And it says, and very, and very many of them stayed away. And when they did, the darkness became greater for the whole. And it was the regular presence of each person that lit up the church. When we come in here together, we light up the church. I'm about to, see, the world talking about I'm about to be lit. I'm lit for Jesus. I'm lit, I'm, I'm lit, I'm gonna shine bright for Jesus. When you come in here, we, we, we lit the church. With your presence, it's very important. And the also come in a time, people, let me tell you something. When we're going to come back to the house of the Lord the way that we once did, we used to have service every Sunday morning and every Sunday night. And people came out to the house of the Lord, but we've gotten comfortable. But God is causing us, and there's going to be a return because we're going to have to come to God's house because we're not going to know what to do. We're going to have to come back to God's house. And God wants us to know that it's us, his fans, that's going to cause the church to be lit. You know, sometimes, even in the world, that's why it's important for us to be lit, but we need to be lit with Jesus, or lit for Jesus. You know, I don't know the street term, and I might, it might mean something totally different than what I'm saying, but that's my, my lesson and my story. <laughs> this is my sermon. But sometimes, you know, we want to be lit for the, in, in the world and doing the world things, but you know, sometimes people don't even have any problems uh, with the Lord himself, but they have problems with his fans. Because us as his fans, we don't, we don't do what we need to do or we don't glorify God in the way that we act and the things that we do. And that's why uh, it's important that we stay lit for Jesus and be a lamp, amen, unto the Lord. Be a light that's, uh, uh, that's sitting up on a hill, amen, at all times. Let our light shine. And we need to drop that, let this little light shine. Let your light shine. You don't need no little light right now. In these last days, we need to shine bright. But it's important that we stay in a place where God can use us and we make his name great and we glorify him. Not only we bring our talents, but we bring our time and, and before God and we, we give to God, amen, the glory that's due unto him. We, we set our affections on things above and we give our attention to the word of God and we place our allegiance in serving God. We make God, in other words, our priority. We make God our priority. And I'm telling you, when we give our time and our talents, our treasury to God's house, when we take up and receive tithes and offerings, when we sow our seeds because we are sowers, when we give because we're givers, it's making God's name great. When we bring our talents, it's making his name great. When, we bring, when you get up here and you sing and to the Lord, you play those instruments, you're making God's name great. You're making his name glory. When you usher, you're making his name great because you bring your talents and your gift unto the Lord. How many of y'all want to make God's name great? Well, we need to serve his house. When we bring our tithes and our offerings, our treasury to the Lord, amen, we're making his name great. Don't you know when we bring our treasure to God's house, we have more to give and, and we can distribute his goodness? We can display his goodness? And let me tell you something else we're about to do in these last days. We're about to make his name great because we're going to demonstrate his goodness. 
I believe and I decree and I declare that the signs and wonders getting ready to follow us like never before. It's time for us, the church, to cast out some demons, amen, to raise the dead, enforce Satan's defeat, walk in divine health, lay hands on the sick for them to recover. It's time for us to continually enforce his defeat and walk in the plans and the purposes of God for our life. That's how we're going to demonstrate his goodness and we're going to make his name great. God is getting ready to bless us like never before. And I'm ready to make his name great. There's a scripture and I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and then we're going to do something that, that I feel like God is calling me to do in this place today. God is getting ready to cause us to be uh, a people of praise and worship. God wants us to go forth in the earth, and he wants us to tell people about his goodness. When we go forth and we distribute and demonstrate and display his goodness, and we go and testify, and we tell people about his goodness, God wants us to go and do this thing like the Good Samaritan. God wants us to be able to be a blessing to somebody else. The Bible talks about the Good Samaritan. We're not going to go over the story, but the Bible said when no one else helped the person on the side of the road, that the Good Samaritan took care of him. And he took care of all of his needs. And that's how we're going to make God's name great. We're going to go and do. We're going to be like the Good Samaritan. We're going to show love for hurting people. When people are out there hurting and they need someone to assist them, they need someone to aid them, it's going to be you and it's going to be me, amen, that's going to help them. We're going to be the Good Samaritans in these last days. It's not going to be just about us and, 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 and our families, but we're going to reach out to somebody else and we're going to get up and go. The Bible said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We're going to go into the world and we're going to do. We're going to define who our neighbor is by going out and preaching and testifying and telling other folks about the Lord. But also not only imitationally we can go out and be imitators of Christ, amen, by doing good works, but we also can uh, go and uh, cause people to be motivated and we can tell them to come see invitational type of, of, of story or testifying that we can give to people. The woman at the well, remember when Jesus read her mail and he told her about her lifestyle. And the Bible said that, she said that you have spoken the truth, you must be a prophet. People are going to be able to determine and tell that we are from the Lord. And God is with us. And the Bible said that this woman went out and told the people. That's how we're going to make God's name great. We're going to go out and tell the people, come and see a man who knew all these things about me. This man who loves me in spite of. And sometimes I'm telling y'all, when we get out and we start doing what God tells us to do, we're going to be inspirational to somebody else, and we're going to go and tell it. By, we'll have a conversation with people. Just in your conversation at work, your conversation in the supermarket, your conversation with your cousin, your conversation with your friends. Like the man that was demon-possessed, amen, he was delivered. And the Bible said that he went back in among the ten cities. I mean, he started telling people of what Jesus has done. And the Bible said Jesus became the talk of the town. The talk of the town. And that's what I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to encourage you to make Jesus the talk of the town. Not about what's going on with the housewives, not what's going on with your neighbor, what's going on with somebody else, but make Jesus the talk of the town. I'm telling you, they, they, when the, uh, when, in Joshua, when, when the Hittites came, they came to deceive Joshua and tell him that, you know, that they came there to, uh, they heard about Jesus, uh, heard about God, and, and they heard about the news of him and his fame. They wanted to deceive him, but I'm telling you, people are going to be telling us that, you know, tell me a little bit more about what your God has done. I've heard all this good news, and that's going to give us an opportunity to win souls. We're not going to have to be up here on Sunday morning and wait for somebody to come down here in the pew, you know, down here on the uh, altar. But we're going to rest, worship God and we're going to honor God and we're going to worship him and make his name great. Well, one way that we can make his name great, because the scripture said, it, it Joshua 9 and 9, I think he said, I, they, I've heard of your fame, God. And so we're going to make people hear of God's fame. How many people want to be fans of God? Well, if you're going to be a fan of God, you can't be ashamed of him. So we're going to make a snake. I want everybody to stand on your feet real quickly. We have a few minutes. It's just 12, 14. We're going to make God's name great by praising him this morning. I want you, before we even start praising him, I want you to think for just a moment about what God has done for you already. He don't have to do anything else. I, I'm a believer that God doesn't have to do anything else in this house this morning for you that 
You might think that God needs to do this and he needs to do that, but if he never done anything else, we can make his name great. And we can start thinking. So I want you to pause for just a moment. I want you to think about what God has done for you. Think about how God brought you out. Think about how God has been a blessing to you. How the Lord has been your provider. How the Lord has been your banner. The Bible says, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. He is Jehovah Nisi. The banner over us is love. I thank God that he is my victory. I want to thank him this morning that he is my shepherd. If some of y'all this morning, you thank God because you've been healed in your body. You've been delivered. When the doctor told you that you was going to be checking out of here pretty soon. But you took the word of God in your mouth. And you remember him. And you think about how he healed your body. When you had pain in your body. God healed your body. When you couldn't even think right in your mind. God healed your mind. I want you to think and think about that this morning. And let's make God's name great. We're going to run tell somebody. Woo, glory to God. I'm telling you, we just got to wading out in this message just a little bit. But listen, you can take the whole swim. You understand? We just waded out a little bit today, but you can get this whole thing. We want you to get this message by Dr. Jennifer Johnson. It's a part of a powerful series on revival fires. You need to get this message, listen to it over and over and over again. I know it's going to change your life. You say, you preachers always say that because it's always true. You listen to it, it's going to change you. That's what the Word of God is designed to do. Not just entertain you, but change you. So you listen to it, grab hold of it, practice it, and watch it go to work in your life. And speaking of revival, it's time for the 2017 A Call to Excellence Fall Holy Ghost Revival. This year, Dr. Jennifer has a special, uh, special theme, stay woke. Now, I, I know that young folks say that I, I, Bishop ain't really caught on what that means, but I know what the Bible means. It says, awake thou that sleepeth, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Get in on this revival, amen. Listen, she's changed up a little bit. It's gonna be on a Thursday night and a Friday night because she wanted everybody to be there both nights for this powerful time. Friday night is going to be a special concert with the Binions. That's right, Dave and Nicole Binion are going to be in the house along with a 100 voice choir. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. This thing is going to be good. You can't afford to miss it. So stay tuned at the end of the broadcast. There'll be more information about the 2017 A Call to Excellence Holy Ghost Revival. Listen, we got to get out of here. Thank you so much for joining us again on today for the, for the overflowing life. And remember until next week, keep living life to the full until it overflows.